Peace, what's up, y'all? It's Wednesday, July 31st. We're here back on Gotham, Oakland. Going to do a quick review of all the crazy stuff happening in our city this year. It seems that every morning when I wake up, I'm scared to look at my phone or my news break app for the latest bad news about what's happening in Oakland. And this week was no different. I thought that they were running reruns at one point on the news because it, it seems like the elder will be attacking Chinatown yet again. And I know we heard Charles just saying last week that she was going to do something about that, right? She was going to bring them to justice and all that good stuff. And it was a hate crime. Um, I don't think she's spoken out since the last violent attack against Asian elders in Chinatown. But Carl Chan did speak out and still have other Oakland community members who are finally demanding from our elected official that they actually do something about the escalating crime and violence in Oakland. Despite the lies and gaslighting attempts from the city, crime is absolutely not down. It's up and it actually has the potential to even be worse than last year in some regards. I have a co-host today, Chris Moore, the billionaire landlord from Piedmont who rules the world, uh, is going to be joining to give us some perspective on what he's hearing from businesses uh, who are impacted. If you recall, Chris Moore ran for Alameda County Board of Supervisors. He was a newcomer to the Bay Area political scene, garnering a very impressive uh, fifth place in everyone who had more votes than him. And I would say that the people who had a few more votes than him for the fourth place didn't have that much more. They were all elected officials. So Chris Moore was the only non-incumbent who did not have a previous name recognition or political base, who threw his hat in the ring uh, and did remarkably well for a first-time person running for office. So, billionaire, multi-billionaire, how much is he worth? 20 billion, 50 billion? I don't know. Uh, but welcome to the stage, Chris Moore, my co-host for today. Chris, how you doing? Can I get some money? Seneca, just I'm counting those billions, you know. I, I seem to have lost a few. So, I've never uh, seen a billionaire that, that drives a Prius. <laughs> yeah, with 200,000 miles on it. Yeah, exactly. yes. Billionaire, billionaire yeah, energy. Can't, can't afford a new car with those billions right now. Yeah, well, but, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, well, you know, um, maybe it's the trillionaire. It's the new billionaire in our, <laughs> our overinflated society. So we're going to start the show. Remember, we were posting this yesterday that Oakland is the 29th most dangerous city in the world. What, is, what did you uh, think when you saw that, Chris? Uh, not surprised based on really what's going on in Oakland. I mean, after you have a city council that went through probably the largest defund of any police force uh, across the country, uh, of course, you're going to have one of the most dangerous cities uh, in the country. And um, so I wasn't surprised. Actually, I thought it might be even higher on the list. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I, I don't think many people in Oakland were surprised to see that. Uh, well, I mean, you're actually you're right. We, I think we are higher on the list. So let me go to where we got this from. Someone posted from Numbio. You ever heard of Numbio? I haven't heard of it. Well, yep. it's some kind of yep. data. Data center. You know more about data than me, like some kind of data mining center. But right. it says they're looking at a crime index of 2024 mid year. Let me make this a little bigger. Some people are on their phones. Uh, these indexes are historical and they are published periodically. Now, hmm. we were 29 yesterday. Notice how many are in South Africa. What's going on in South Africa? In South Africa and Brazil and the United States are pretty much the, all of the top 20 with very few exceptions. Argentina. Right. Here's Oakland, California, number 27 now. So we've gone up two since that was posted two days ago, if it was posted. A few uh, extra recently. murders got, got included in there or, or uh, something. There was, a, there was a woman murdered in, uh, in East Oakland uh, two days ago. Uh, so somebody was being sex trafficked, got, uh, got murdered uh, two, three days ago. So maybe that, that pushed it up pushed Oakland up on the list. That could very well be it. I mean, look at these other cities. So we're less safe than Lagos, Nigeria, mm -hmm. or Lagos. We're less safe than Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Mexico City is pretty safe, but maybe it's a big city. Maybe I only go to the Chile's areas. 
when I'm there. Um, not good. We are also the fifth least city, least safe city in the country, right? Let's go back up to that. Where... We're we're also the top five in in the United States, and that's you know what do you expect? This current city council, led by uh, you know Shang Tao and Mayor and Nikki Bass as uh, council president, they have that's this has been their goal, right? To defund the police by fifty percent, and this is what you get the most dangerous or one of the most dangerous cities in the world. You notice you don't hear defund or reimagine public safety or any um, code words when it comes to policing. What happened to the progressive? Uh, do they have any current line when it comes to public safety or policing or are they just completely like moderate now where they say they want more police? Yeah, I mean, when uh, Shang and uh, Nikki uh, in their budget proposal to defund uh what 300 police positions or public safety positions they said we're prioritizing public safety you know they're going to prioritize it now by cutting you know large portions of the departments so uh, of course that's that's the narrative and they're going to be out probably taking pictures with police uh, officers right up till uh, november 5th in hopes that uh, you know shang doesn't get recalled and and uh, nikki doesn't uh, you know nikki at- shang is getting recalled that's not even a, oh, yeah. i don't even it's- no but brainer. I have a question. So what, you, what you're saying, if I hear you correctly, is that they dropped the virtue signaling and they're just blatantly lying now about what they're doing. I mean, they've been lying ever since they got into office, uh, even when they ran for office. But yes, they're blatantly lying right now. They are saying they're prioritizing public safety while they are making the largest cuts they've ever made to public safety. <laughs> it's, even bigger than 2020, uh, 2021? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're cutting huge numbers out of the, you know, uh, hundreds of, of officers, hundreds of uh, public safety professionals. It's they're, they're not protecting the public. They're not uh, prioritizing public safety. They're doing the exact opposite. Uh, well, so we're going to see what happens when you don't prioritize public safety. When our next clip we're going to watch together here. Mm-hmm. Um, this came out yesterday, 21 hours ago. Oakland seniors afraid to leave homes following violent attacks. Let's give it a look. Dozens of violent attacks over the past month have left elders and an Oakland. Did she say dozens? Dozens. She did. At least two dozens. So that's 24 minimum violent attacks, right? On At that- least. I mean, that's just in the last couple of weeks, right? So. But crime is down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let her. I'm gonna let her cook. Crime is down. Scared to leave their homes. Crown Forest Philippe Jagal reports that they are now desperately asking local leaders for some help. This is the golden years. They are supposed to be getting respect, love, and care. And yet and they are met with fear and despair. Living here in a senior house. It's not safe at all. Not since the end of June, at least. On Tuesday, elders who live at Westlake Christian Terraces. The Tuan make those signs. I'm not sure. Maybe Tuan did. You know, Tuan's the uh, the sign maker, um, possibly, or uh, yeah, somebody with Carl's Carl's team there. You know, I, I'd put out one thing here. You see, this is the Asians are being attacked, and yet both. That's Nikki Bass's district, by the way, council president, who's Asian, and also Shang Tao, who's Asian. So why are they not protecting the Asian community? I don't think they're really supporting the Asian community. They say they are, but they are not because you don't see them there. Do you see them out there? They are hiding. Well, and none of these people are elected. Carl Chan's not an elected official. You, no. bring up a good, you bring up a good point. You know that uh, didn't they didn't it show that there was very little Asian support for Shing Tao in the last polls that we saw broken down by demographics? Did you see that poll? It I did see one poll where definitely there are most Asians that are against or actually you know against Shang Tao continuing after November fifth. So they very much support the recall of Shang Tao. They see how she's destroyed uh, the city of Oakland. Who who can't? Hey, let me close my. I forgot to close my studio door, and I heard a train down here. One, give me one second. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll let it down. yeah. I mean, the signs uh, you can see 
everybody, you see the number of people there, everybody is, uh, you know, extremely upset and frightened to leave. So uh, that is Chinatown. That's District 2. That's, uh, you know, Nikki Bass. There's two towers to near Lake Merritt in Oakland <laughs> hold a news conference at their affordable housing community that has been under attack. Resident and Council Broadway. President Sister Marie when Taylor says nearly 30 violent be. attacks and robberies have recently been reported in the area. 15 of the victims live at Westlake, 14 are Asian American, and less than a handful of arrests have been made. Right now, our residents are afraid to leave the grounds. They don't want to leave their apartments because so many have been attacked brutally and it has to stop. This picture was taken of a resident receiving medical treatment following a recent beating and theft. The Oakland Police Department has stepped up patrols in the area. Community leaders have teamed with the elders to develop a list of actions the city council, state, and federal agencies can take to help. More patrol from OPD, higher patrol, and a county sheriff, and also including the bar police. And secondly, we want to have a police substation in this facility, if not extending in the area. And thirdly, we want to uh, revitalizing the freebie shuttle. And at last, we want to work with the county and making sure that there will be resources, that program, they can revitalize the program so they can walk the seniors to wherever they want to go. The resident council says it has reached out to the mayor's office for help and has not heard back from the mayor directly. But council member Carol Fife has agreed to meet. In Oakland, Philippe... Five always agrees to me, and then she doesn't do anything. They oh, give yeah. you a bunch of pandering. I mean, she, Carol, Carol Fife just called those people uh, yellow. Yellow right? That's people. What she refers to Asians, right? So Yeah, Carol Fife, she wants to help the yellow people now? <laughs> She's helping the yellow people? Exactly. Okay, uh, you know, that video makes me upset. As much as, as we're joking right now, um, we're laughing so we don't cry because these are our grandmothers and our elders who are being attacked. This reminds me of uh, an elder we lost who was brutally knifed to death uh, last year on her way home from her job shortly before her retirement from the post office. And remember how Cat Brooks defended the murderer and said that he was mentally unwell and the system had failed him. And only after public outcry did they try to go and throw some money at the family uh, with the millions that they get from Queen Delaney and Wayne Jordan that they use to try to buy off people in Oakland to cover up their stink. Right. It's it's really uh, disgusting. Okay, we're gonna watch another video about what's happening in Oakland. And this one was a recent robbery about a week ago at the piano bar. If mm -hmm. you've been there, piano bar is awesome. You can go karaoke. Uh, it's one of the most exciting and fun places to go for foundation, I mean, not just foundational Oaklanders. And by foundational Oaklanders, I mean by people who uh, are endeared or grew up or went to high school here who have, you know, multi-generational links to the city. Yep. This is one of those like hometown places. I, have you ever been to Piano Bar to karaoke? I have not, not the one in Oakland. I've been to one in San Francisco. In that area on edge and very frustrated. This is video from one of those businesses. Now, police say they're looking into the burglaries across downtown Oakland, just blocks apart from each other. Jose Martinez has right? This is how Dramatic surveillance video shows an early morning breaking at the alley, a historic dive bar on Grand Avenue. You can see in the video people grabbing anything. Oh, the alley. Did I mix it up? Was Piano Bar this another Yes, the alley over on, uh, yeah, right by... By 40th. Piano bar uh, got robbed too. I'll find that one too after this. That could have cash in it. So they came in through these doors here. And uh, sorry, the floor is a little bit wet. Pretty here. much so everybody's been robbed. Ripped out the Multiple ATM, Multiple. which was located um, right here. And they also. Oh, no, that is the karaoke bar. Our, that's, the, that's the spot. Okay. Our register, we had to just put a replacement in here. They ripped that out as well, as you can see in the wow. uh, surveillance. It's a yeah. nightmare, he says. They're experiencing for the second time in less than two years. The fact that this keeps happening and, you know, cars getting broken into out here all the time along this street. You know, I mean, it's a shame when it's just like a small 
mom and pop sort of business. Especially because he tells me they have a commitment with Oakland since the alley was founded in 1933 and is one of the most historic piano bars in the Bay Area. But they he says care. they weren't the only one hit last night. He says Almond and Oak was another victim. It's a bit of like an eerie feeling just watching it happen. You know, it just feels like a violation. I was going to say sure that. Did like not, violated. Shangtel did not come down and say, I'm sorry, or talk to them, nor, nor the council member there. Are you still one of the oldest businesses in Oakland and they couldn't even show up for that photo op to help them out? They don't, they don't care. It's not their priority. They're, they're prioritizing public safety. I mean, public's being robbed. They don't want to show up when that happens. It's nuts. So if, let's say you were an elected official. Um, would you try to show up for all of these? Would you think that that would help you in election year or hurt you in election year? You would think it actually would help, you know, if you're out and you truly are representing the public and public safety, you'd go out to that business owner, talk to them, see what they needed um, and see see what's really going on. These people, you you never see uh, Shang Tao nor Nikki Bass go out in the community. They run away from these situations. They're doing but, some other fake photo op for some other you- but do you think it's because they need plausible deniability about what's really happening when they're developing these policies that actually cut public safety? Or they just believe that this doesn't, this isn't included in public safety, right? They, their goal is, you know, their main goal is defund the police. I mean, that's, that's, you know, Nikki Bass said 50% defund. She's going to reach 27% defund this year, right? Since, since she said that back in 2020, she and, uh, she and uh, Becky Kaplan. Um, so they they don't want to point this out and point to this, that there are problems uh, in their ver- failed policies. So they're not going to show up there. Well, at this point, it's getting too much to ignore. When's the last time you've seen someone say crimes down? I ain't heard that in a while, huh? Yeah. I haven't <laughs> heard the crimes that? down one. Around me saying crime is down. They're promoting these statistics. I think Fortunately, Oakland Report came out and said the statistics are BS. They're not valid statistics. And that's all stopped. They don't know what to do now. How is they, they don't. They're scrambling. You know, yeah. Chris, I was on a call with a reporter from Politico who quoted mm-hmm. the Oakland Report as having broke that story. And um, it's been really cool watching Darwin lose his shit I- <laughs> and realize that he's played himself and now he actually needs to do a real job, but he can't because he's locked himself into they, uh, his prison of wokery. Those, yeah. Those guys don't know how to do proper research. Uh, they've never had to do it. And now you got a publication, an Oakland Report, that is coming out with real data, factual data. They're not lying like Oakland side does every day and promoting these corrupt like Shang Tao, these corrupt politicians, uh, Oakland side's not going to do that. Oakland side, you know, or, uh, Oakland reports not going to do that. Uh, Oakland side is they're going to promote the, uh, the, the, the corrupt people for some bizarre reason. Um, well, it's so- not a bizarre reason. Uh, so what you said before you, you heard the mom and pop, and I'm going to start the video back in a second, but mom and pop landlords, mom and pop business owners. It seems to be a theme here that if you're not a mega corporation, you don't matter to these elected officials. Is that how you feel as a small housing provider? You provide lots of housing in Oakland, correct? The I, I represent the small housing providers across Oakland. Uh, the mom and pops, the black and immigrant community members that provide affordable housing to the community. Nikki Bash, Shang Tao, Carol Fife. Rebecca Kaplan and their buddy over there at Ace, uh, Lion Simon Weisberg, have done everything in their power to destroy and take away the generational wealth of those small housing providers. It's sick what they're doing. It's sick. Um, and it's yeah. sick what's happening to these businesses. Like, yep. uh, I thought y'all called it Piano Bar, this to Alley, but I had the right location. Yep. Yeah, it was. All right, let yep. me start the video back. A violation that the Oakland Police Department is already investigating, and according to OPD, when officers arrived, they learned that multiple individuals had forced entry into two businesses in the area, took several items, and fled the scene before officers arrived. And it's scary, honestly, especially because uh, sometimes um, during a weekend, 
night, the bar staff might be here that late, just kind of closing up the bar. Hector says that even though this time the response has been a bit better than the first time they were broken into, it's time to double their efforts to protect their business because they're not going anywhere. Definitely going to get, you know, just going to kind of lock the place down, um, put more cameras in. You know, I mean, we can only do so much, uh, you know, because any money. determined thief will that somehow costs money. find costs a way money. In, I mean, they but, know they're going to get know, robbed. We're, we're again, hoping that, you know, life. within like the community and people who are out here, that maybe it'll bring more awareness so people will be more apt to be on the lookout for you know, in order to prevent these sort of things from happening. And Hector tells me he wants to see a more aggressive approach from the police to fight crime in this part of the city. That's not going to happen. More aggressive. You're, you're, as long as more you're deep, aggressive. You're not, you're, that's not going to happen. No, no, not with this current. It's not going to happen unless you vote these people no, out. Exactly. November. Um, everybody's got to get out there in November. Uh, do not vote for Carol Fife, leave her off, and uh, do not vote for uh, Nikki Bass. And you got to vote for the recall. And, and uh, you know, there, there's going to be some, some good candidates running there in November that we'll be out and uh, talking about for sure. There's one more video I want to show. We're talking about the corridor ones. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll just edit this part out. We're gonna do this and then we'll wrap up with the last part. One second. Okay. Okay, so for our next video, um, Hagenberger Corridor. Now, remember when Tao held a press conference at that Hilton claiming that she was back and everything was going to be fine and they had everything under control? Yeah. And I told him, why is, why is Tao having this at the Hilton when the Hilton is going to close? And I was in March and everybody was like, you're spreading rumors and you hate Oakland. And I'm like, I love Oakland, but you should know that that Hilton is going to close. What right. happened, Chris? That Hilton closed. Closing. Closed right after that. Closing. Um, but yeah. it looked like we've had a, a mass robbery that had national news of like 100 people inside of a gas station two years ago. Now it looks like Hagenberger Corridor is in the news again for a series of businesses being yeah. robbed. Do you know Ken Houston? Yeah, actually, let me tell you a quick story. I was just in of Philadelphia. Of course, oh, go for it. I, I was in Philadelphia this week and I was. Uh, talking to a guy and he said he was driving to the Oakland airport and he stopped off to get gas and at the 76 station there on Hagenberger. Imagine this, somebody in Philadelphia, right? Just this weekend. And he said he went to get gas and he had opened up his trunk to get something out of his trunk. And a, an Oakland police officer came over to him and said, are you trying to get your car stolen? He's like, you need to know what? around here, you can't open up your trunk because somebody's going to steal your luggage. And if you leave your car door open, somebody's going to come up and steal your car. And the guy's thinking, what, what are you talking about? And, and the cop's telling him, we can't even chase them if they do that to you, right? I mean, imagine that. That's that's somebody across Well, well Gavin said that they can't, they should be chasing them, but Oakland City Council passed rules that they can't chase people. Now, and remember, we had a chase that people did get killed, innocent people at a taco truck. And I do think that if you have a rule where criminals know they're not going to be chased, then they're going to just run away. Absolutely. So I agree that you shouldn't have that rule. There may be some times where an officer decides, hey, it's not safe to continue to chase because they put right. innocent lives at risk. At that point, they could deploy a drone or have some kind of drone network where they can continue to chase the perpetrator into a safe again. We're not trying to do any of that. And there are places that are templates for this stuff. Is that correct? To your oh, knowledge? Yeah. No, there's, there's, oh, definitely. Um, in, in Southern California, they're doing that. Uh, I think in Temecula, actually, they're, they're using drones. So there's definitely options. I mean, but do you want the drones out? Like, 
it's easy to talk about it, but do you want like a surveillance state where you got drones everywhere watching everything you do? I don't want that personally. I don't think they need to be everywhere, but I think there needs to be, of course, just like right now, there's a policy in Alameda County where if you use a gun in a crime, you're not going to be charged with using that gun in a crime. So what happens? We have a lot of violent crime. That's that's the There's no right deterrent now. against using a gun in a crime exactly. now. Exactly. So everybody uses them, and there's people... no enhancements for guns for guns and crimes anymore. Correct. Is that are you still? No, there are no enhance. Wow. Basically, you need to go through the DAs need to go through approval versus approval approval. It it they and then they get mm. dropped, right? So yeah, that's why you auntie, see people... Auntie Pam ain't out on that. She's gonna let it's, them go. It's Pam Price exactly, DA. That's you know obviously another reason we're recalling her, but but yeah. So it's the same with chases. The the criminals know. They can steal, rob, rape, whatever they want to do. If they get in their car and start driving away over 50 miles an hour, their they're good is gone, right? So they're safe. Okay. Well, yeah, they're gone. I mean, let me tell you, um, it's Grand Theft Auto in real life. And I've been saying this since 2019 before right. it was popular, but I've been playing Grand Theft Auto since the video came out in 2001 when I was still in college. This is a game that has spanned multiple generations uh, right. and has created an entire subculture. Uh, I don't have to explain what the game is to anyone at this point. That's how popular yeah. it, uh, is it is. Oakland, so, California is GTA. Oakland, California is Grand Theft Auto. Absolutely. Yep. yep. A thousand percent. All right. Looks like, you know, what's interesting is that we know all the people in these videos. Carl Chan, we yeah. know from Houston. Oakland has all these amazing community members, but somehow the collected officials won't meet with us or I, work I, with I, us to help improve things. Let, let me say one quick thing about Ken Houston, where you're going to talk here. Ken Houston, he has a business that hires uh previously in incarcerated uh individuals and gives them jobs do you know that because he worked with nancy o'malley the former da that da pam price defunded him right so she defunded the services he was providing to help previously incarcerated individuals and because uh, he supported his political rival exactly yep and this is yeah. common with the um, the Mean Girls high school stuff is pretty much how Shin Kyle and Five and all of them operate. I think that they, they think they've become kind of uh, kings and queens. It's really disturbing how people who call themselves progressives are right. just playing some of the most low vibration, um, demonic and genocidal tendencies that people in leadership can display. And with a heightened political environment, when things like genocide and war are all on the menu, it's terrifying to have these people in charge of our city. It is. I'm really grateful that we have, in how many days? 98 days? It's roughly 95 days until until uh, until these these people are are voted out of office for sure. Well, we gotta do our part first. Yep. All right, let's watch the video. They uh, you see a right there with a kick it open. Door after door, Ken Houston shows us 16 small businesses that were kicked in and ransacked early Saturday morning. This is the remnants of them cutting our fence right here. Houston is the director of Oakland's Beautification Council and one of five owners of this office building on Collins Drive near Hagenberger Road. He believes thieves cut through two fences and broke in through an exit door on the second story. I've never seen it like this. It's lawless. They're not scared. It's called healthy fear and respect. They have no healthy fear and respect for the law. That's scary. That's Houston right. Houston says their space is an incubator for small businesses with primarily black and Latino owners like Chris Prater's barber shop. Every single time you go through the door, you're like, eh, it's like somebody slept in your bed who wasn't supposed to be in your house. Their office building is directly behind the Denny's on Hagenberger Road that closed earlier this year because of crime in the area. Their building now covered in graffiti. Their parking lot now overrun by campers. Shank it's just out. down the street. Oh, I have to go down there. The, the, parking lot, the parking lot is overwhelmed by a campment now in the Denny's? I didn't see that. I I didn't know. I didn't. Uh, yeah. Let me go back and play it again. Did she say that? I think you're a little further back. Yeah. 
the area. Their building now covered in graffiti. Their parking lot now overrun by campers. Wow. It's just down the street oh, from the 76 gas over that. station that was raided by more than 80 thieves just three weeks ago. Here's co-founder and office manager Latanya Hawkins. As more businesses close, we see, um, you know, what 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 it leads to. You know, we Don't see people look. come and, and destroy businesses like like ours and like our tenants and like the gas station up the street. And so it's it's really just disheartening, disheartening because we we're from here. According to our neighborhood safety tracker, burglaries across the entire city of Oakland are down by 21 percent compared to the previous three year average. Oakland no. Mayor Shang Tao oh, they're just misleading you there. Last That's week. what Shang Tao was probably telling them. That's how that's been proven to be inaccurate, right? So uh, we by, again, to, we've got to hit them up. You know, the, the nerve of them to play that after running a story about crime and then showing a picture of Tyler. What is this, KPIX? Uh, I think it was, yeah. ABC7 is usually not favorable. With the deputy uh, police chief and city department of transportation director over safety and traffic concerns. Oakland police said they believe at least three suspects were involved, but no arrests have been made. In Oakland, Lena Howland, ABC 7 News. Oh, it's ABC. Yeah. Yeah, ABC. Hmm. Yeah. All right. We got to get to the. Oh. Sorry, we're still playing. All right. We got one more thing to talk about before we wrap up for today. It's great having a co host to banner back and forth with. Thank you, Chris, for uh -huh. coming back on the show. Uh, our last thing is about the Oakland Stadium deal that they're trying to get a photo op on, like it's, it's done and it's going to save a city. Uh, as a, a financial expert who has an extensive... <clears throat> right. It's what? No, go oh, ahead. What did you say? It's sold. <laughs> it's she sold. Said. The deal's yeah, done. So half of it. We so, I mean, first of it's all, let me, let, me, let me say this first before we get into... Um, the ins and outs of this this deal. It's not a good thing to sell your city's permanent asset for temporary solution to a structural deficit problem. Right. It's only going to be a one time, at best, at best, a one time shot in the arm to keep you going to the very next budget cycle when you're faced with the same problems again. I think it's also ironic that just less than two years ago, you saw city council throwing around plans to lease this same property for upwards of $90 million per year. $90 million per year for a lease has turned into $105 million for a one-time sale for yep. half for our half of this property. And um yep. that's called a tourniquet. And in, in life, if you get shot in the arm, if you go to a stop the bleed class for bullet wounds or, or any catastrophic bleeding wound, the first thing they teach you is to tourniquet the wound to save your life and sacrifice the limb because the limb may not be used anymore after you cut off the circulation. And so what they're doing is they're cutting off our circulation for our, um, our foundational and anchor businesses, if you will, and assets that could be used to bring tremendous amounts of future revenue to the city. And they're trying to paint it as it's a good thing for the city of Oakland. What are your thoughts on that before we go through the term sheet? And then we're going to let you, you're going to guide us through the term sheet. You're the, you're the one with the municipal finance experience, experience other than cities. So I want you to take the lead. Once we go there, I'll scroll through, just give you the direction. But what are your initial thoughts on just having to sell the stadium, period? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly like what you said, is they are selling off an asset, a revenue-producing asset, and they are eliminating uh, the opportunity for the city of Oakland to ever earn revenue from that asset again. They're selling it off. Shang Tao, in her, you know, this, this PR press conference, which was a lot of BS said, this is going to drive billions of dollars of revenue to the city. They're selling oh. the asset. She's selling oh. off the asset. She's, she's, I, she doesn't have any concept of what that means. I mean, she I, is I, a I, tardy Teletubby. <laughs> this is what tardy Teletubbies do. You know, that Teletubbies is meant for infants. You ever heard Teletubbies talk? It's like, hey, 
it didn't even make legible sound. This is how this is the the intelligence level of, of our mayor. I'm sorry, my bad. Some, okay, somebody sorry. somebody stuck some words in front of her. She also called called it a great investment for the city, right? That um, so. I don't think she understands this is not an investment. There's the city is selling off an asset, a revenue producing asset. It's the other side that's making the investment if the deal closes, right? Uh, so it 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 obviously makes no sense. And I think the third big point here is, and this is something Tim Gardner was interviewed on the news, you know, from Oakland Report, and he said, This is this sale is going to help the city for two months. Right. And then they are still in the same situation where they are running a, an essentially bankrupt city because they refuse to do what they need to do to correct the finances in in the city of Oakland. And that's all on Shang Tao. And that's all on Nikki Bass, the council president. They are uh, they are further destroying uh, the city of Oakland and this deal. That they are. All right. Well, Chris, I've got the. Um, the LOI, I'm sorry, the term sheet in front of me. And, and for those of you who've ever signed, uh, uh, well, you know what, I'm sorry. Let, let, walk us through this because yeah. I, you're better at this than me. Explain what it means, what's missing that should be there, and what are some of the things that stand out to you that you think that people who are watching and listening today should know? So number one, they call this a term sheet. It is a extremely high level set of terms that primarily benefit the, the purchaser. Uh, and it also benefits uh, the city council members to lie to the public and act like this is a good thing for the city of Oakland. Um, so number one, you know, you got the purchase price. Okay. 105 mil. The payment schedule is next. And you can see they are letting them pay for this all the way through the closing, which they say, will happen in 2026, right? So they're giving them like a year and a half. I don't know, there's there's not many deals out there where they let you pay off the deal uh, without interest, without anything over a year and a half, right? Especially with the lion's share coming at closing and not up front. Exactly. And it's all the way at the end of, of 20, the 2026 uh, budget cycle. So the key here is, Essentially, this the AASEG is putting down five million dollars. It's it's what's called an option to buy. They are putting down five million dollars for the option to buy this hundred and five million dollar property without an appraisal, which is required by the city. There doesn't look like they're getting an appraisal uh, because they the city doesn't want to show the public that this could be worth. It could be worth billions. It could be worth a lot more money than what they're selling this for. Oh, so um, they don't want people to know that we're giving away our assets. Exactly. They're they're exactly. giving it away just to to solve this, you know, this short term financial need that the city has. So no, I don't I don't I don't gonna cut you off there. I don't think they're giving it away to solve a financial need. That would be too altruistic. They're giving it away to survive this election cycle and right. act like they're doing something. Yeah, that's you're right. Um, you know, the second thing you see here, which is not defined in here is let's say they pay the 5 million, let's say they pay the 10 million and then they can't come up with the rest of the money. Does the city have to give it back? So it's going to be really important to, to look at this. Shouldn't it be assumed that they don't have to give it back? No, not in any real estate deal. I mean, they could, they could argue they want that money back. It's, it's. The real agreement is coming on supposedly April or uh, August 23rd. So that document and what we see in there is going to really tell us um, what what's really going on with the payments. When do they really what happens if they don't pay it? What happens if uh, they don't come through? Do they just kind of get extensions or do they have to, uh, you know, do we does the city of Oakland have to pay that money back or do we keep it? We don't know any of that information. And Shang Tao, you know, Shang and Nikki and these guys, they may not even know to ask those questions, right? They, they, it's going to be an interesting, interesting to see this purchase agreement. I don't think that they know to ask those questions because not they've yet. never, they've never owned a company before. They've never signed a check on the front before. They've never managed a profit and loss sheet. 
right. before and, and, and except and, for the city of Oakland and where they've done a, a terrible job pushing our city. Yeah, they've they're responsible for bankrupting the city. Yeah, so. That pretty much. Uh, so I want to point out something here, and this is something that I I have a little expertise in. Mm -hmm. The deed restriction around community benefits. This is the part that they've done the most virtue signaling around. Now I'm going to yep. read it. AASCG and the city shall negotiate now shall negotiate in good faith. <laughs> Remember that part. Negotiate in good faith. All right. Community mm -hmm. benefits within five years after the closing, including but not limited to labor agreement and labor peace, local and small business contracting goals, workforce training and local employment provision, mm -hmm. living wage, public open spaces and parks, sustainable and green development standards transportation infrastructure and transportation demand management programs, including transit affordability and accessibility, affordable housing, anti-displacement, and housing preservation policy, city participation and profit sharing, and other community benefits. They might as well add that they were going to give uh, a new puppy to every child in <laughs> Oakland because, because negotiating in good faith is one of the weakest standards for a contract that basically means that you have to show up and not say anything stupid that would prove that you were being a bad faith actor. Right. Um, it's like being an at-will employee and claiming that it benefits the employee. Yeah. Like you ever been fired and say, you have the ability, you can fire us anytime and we can fire you anytime. So at will is a good thing. That's what they tell union members. And what we tell union members is, no, you deserve a contract with your employer where they can only fire you for cost or if they prove financial hardship to protect you so that you can sleep at night knowing that you can feed your family. And so when you're looking at negotiating good faith, it's terribly weak to for them to be virtue signaling so much about that is actually by default, going to magically do all of these things when there's absolutely no legal uh, mandate for these people to deliver these after they buy our Coliseum at a pittance. I'm very upset about this. Hey, the more I Seneca, talk about what, it, the better is, I get. Seneca, what is labor peace? Labor what? peace means that, um, good point. Thank you for asking. So, labor peace means that you don't have any strikes or that you don't do any union busting. So, that if they have any uh, work there, if there's any work that needs to be done uh, associated with AASEG and there is a labor union involved or mm -hmm. they want to organize those workers, that they just let them do it, that they don't union, but there's no opposition uh, to the union um, meeting and conferring about any, any aspect of this agreement. And they are basically essentially agreeing to use union labor for any and all labor associated with this project, which again, right. by default, I don't have a problem with. But as you know, most of the projects here are, are developed with a mixture of, of union and non-union work, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what it is and, and demanding that people use all union work for a project sometimes means that it's DOA, it's not an attractive proposal to investors because it's, it's, it's unneedlessly costly. So, um, I just wanted to point out to people who are listening that when you hear the virtue claiming that they're going to do all these things, they just have to meet in good faith within five years after yeah. closing. <laughs> Why not right. one year after closing? Five years after closing is so, it's just such a weak agreement. I'm a, is there anything else you want to share about the agreement here, Chris? I I don't think, uh, you know, reasonable restrictions on, on uh, what was that last point? Reasonable restrictions on, on uh, trans ability to transfer the city's interest. Um, so that's basically saying, hey, um, you can sell this off, you know, at some point and uh, with, if it's within reason. <laughs> so I, I really, this is, this is, this piece of paper is not worth the signatures that, you know, the, the Changtel and the, you know, put put their their signatures on it's uh really we'll see what the the true agreement says and uh hopefully they release that to the public i hope so it looks like they were fishing for feel good headlines to detract from the fact that they are failing our city as you've all seen yeah. by the three stories we've showed today just in the past week or so of businesses around oakland being robbed and elders being violently attacked in the street uh 
crying and pleading for help from our city officials. And once again, as always, being ignored. Chris, right. we got to wrap it up. I know you got to go. This has been one of our longer episodes. It feels like one of my shorter episodes, but it's actually <laughs> one of the longer ones by That's time. Quick. But uh, and, and I don't even think I need to edit out most of this besides the train noise when I had to get up. But mm -hmm. um, and I may just leave that in because it was authentic. So here's what I'll say. Uh, I've closed with my remarks. I'm going to give Chris one minute to close out. And then we'll see you all back here on Friday. Uh, we will not have Scott Means Friday because I have to go to Denver. Um, so I'll be doing my thing from Denver. But Scott is going to come on Monday instead. So we will have Scott Means on Monday. And if you don't know who Scott Means is, he is the former director of Health and Human Services. He knows a lot about what happened with the homeless. The things that he's going to be able to tell you about what's going on in City Hall is going to shock you. Um, they should be, I, I'm pretty sure that the Saudis in the mayor's office is terrified to know that Scott Means is going to be blowing the whistle at what's going on there. So Chris, take it away. Uh, before he does that, I'm going to sign off. Peace, everyone. I'll see you Friday. Chris, go for it. Yeah. Hey, Seneca, thanks for uh, inviting me today. Um, and I just have to say, everybody's got to get out there in November. We're all working. Well, I'm working with Seneca. We're working together with uh, the community to get the right people uh, in, in November. It is uh, hashtag takeover and we're bringing common sense back to Oakland. Get out, watch what Seneca has to say, watch what uh, Empower Oakland and other organizations have to say and uh, come out in November 5th and uh, vote to get the, uh, this, this, these, all this, this bad apples and, and destructive people out of office. Thanks Seneca. Thank you, Chris. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Yep. Get back. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here. Yo, I swear it's only up from here.